everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Paranormal Happy Hour. I have with me my guest Nando from Portal to the Paranormal. Hello. How's it going? Having me. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? It's good, 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 good. So, um, it, it's so weird. Like all the intros, once it plays, it always catch me off guard when it ends. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm on. You gotta start now. <laughs> I get started. So I just want to say uh, before we begin chatting, I just want to give a big shout out to Pagan the Series. So this is an amazing um, super thriller TV series that still needs to be filmed. Um, phenomenal screenwriters, uh, Denise Pounds and Sarah Lim actually brought this together to make it into a super thriller series. I'm so excited because I am involved in it. Um, Victor Santiago, my friend, is involved in it. And we're just so excited. So everyone, please follow them. Um, Pagan, the series on Facebook. Um, follow them, like their Facebook and uh, Nocturnal Imaginations through TikTok. So again, I'm so excited. Um, well, let's get started. So I actually created an Almond Joy martini which is pretty, pretty intense. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I used. So I used um, a half a cup of almond chocolate, um, the chocolate melt, the chocolate. I think I used probably silk. Um, a lot of people could use actually um, almond, just regular uh, milk, cocoa milk, or they could use coconut milk. But I typically want to use the almond chocolate only because it gives that almond flavor. I don't like too much of almond. I just, I like more of the coconut flavor. So I got the um, almond chocolate milk. And then I used, now this is for the rim. So I don't know if you could see it, but it's the real gourmet cream of coconut. So I'll show you what I do with this. Um, and then of course, the best part, um, just like a vanilla vodka, I use that. Um, shredded coconut, heavy cream, and last but not least, the sliced almonds with the shredded coconut. Now, with all these, I use a half a cup of each. I use a half a cup of the almond chocolate. I use a half a cup of uh, the crust ice that you'll use in this shaker here. And then I use a half a cup of the vanilla vodka, a half a cup of the heavy cream, and the, um, the shredded coconut and the... Uh, sliced almonds. I use sliced almonds. Um, I don't know how hard it is to actually use a rolling pin to actually use whole almonds, but whatever. So, so I put all the ingredients in here on the crust ice. And you, of course, um, now I'm a true fan of um, uh, Bar Rescue, John Taffer. And he always says, it. and he always says, smile while you're shaking. So here we go. Give it a good shake. Yeah. And you want to shake it until you get like a little, like um, a little frost on the cover. So you just shake, 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 shake. Okay. So now you take the martini and you kind of have like the rim of the cream of the coconut cream. And you kind of have to like rim the top of the martini glass like so. So it's like that. All right. So then what you do is you have, so I mix the co uh, the almonds with the coconut, but you can just do coconut. But you kind of want to just rim it in here. So you kind of get a little bit of each. So voila. And then what I did buy is actually an almond joy candy bar. So you could kind of like put it on the rim. And then last but not least, you take this and then look at that. And then here you go. Why? Yeah, so now I nice. have one and a half here because I already started on one. So, all right. So that's that. Great. So, Nando, tell us Hello. about yourself. How did you yeah. get started in the paranormal? Um, it is funny because before I got into it, Sarah was my wife. She was heavily into the paranormal way before I was. Um, she was part of a previous team and, um, you know, she used to tell me stories about what they do 
And I used to refer it as you're going out playing Ghostbusters with your friends, you know, because <laughs> I, I didn't heavily know much about the paranormal and what they actually did. But I do yeah. recall as a, as a child, I do remember having an experience where I saw an apparition of my grandmother sitting next to me or sitting next to the bed, like my bed. Mm-hmm. You know, and there was always that. But as a kid, you grow out of it, don't you? you? Do you know what I mean? You have those experiences. Hey, Matt, hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, you have those experiences, and then you grow out of it. And then Sarah, as I said, she was part of the team. And then during lockdown, Dan, he created Portal to the Paranormal. And he was like, do you want to be part of the team? And I was like, do you know what? Let's give it a go. You know, and mm-hmm. then it's just from there, you know, we we created Portal to the Paranormal as a great, we've got a great team. Yeah. And along the way, you know, we took it that step further where Sarah, on the off chance, decided to invite a guest on to a, what we thought would just be a lockdown thing on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And it's just grown from there. Um, you know, and then throughout the time, I've had some, I would say, experiences that I've sort of like, well, you know, did this really happen? You know, and it's just sparked that interest. And what it is now for me is, you know, going to locations and trying to document evidence that we pick up and try and work out, is this something to do with the elements? Is it something to do with the surroundings? You know, just trying to work out what could be paranormal and what isn't. And it's just been a great, a great journey. And, and I think the other thing we do our podcast as well, and we've mm-hmm. met some great people along the way, you know, listening to their stories, you know, and you sort of build a friendship and you sort of like, you can relate to each other. Oh, you've had that experience. Well, we've had something similar. And it's just mm-hmm. great because you're learning from each other. You know, it's a great learning path of how people, because yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't realize how big the paranormal field is, you know, until, yeah. you know, I stepped into it. And yeah, like I said, the journey has been awesome. You know, meeting people. Getting mm-hmm. to, I love doing the podcast because I've had some great guests. Well, yeah. all the guests have been absolutely great, you know, and it's just great to learn from them. And, you know, everyone's had something similar with experience, but also at the same time, it's been something slightly different as well, you know. So, but yeah, that's how I yeah. got into the paranormal. It, it was a great opportunity. And, you know, what? I've enjoyed it ever since. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, like, how many amazing people you meet like not only on going to these sites but through your podcast like you meet so many amazing people yeah, and it's the connections uh, too you know yeah it, it it's a great you know when you you know with the podcast you know if you do it in the right way mm-hmm. you know you you can it, it's just great it's not just the guests as well it's the people the viewers the the exactly. people that take the time to come in and you know, what I love is when I'm doing a, a show, you know, it's when people are joining in in the conversation, you know, they're, they're just as big a part as the guests, you know, and, you know, I've had great conversation, like me and you, you know, mm-hmm. I think we met and we, we speak behind yeah. the scenes. We, we speak yeah. quite frequently, don't we? We do. Yes. You know, and we're, we're talking about different things that may be going on in life and, yep. and, and that's the connect. And it's funny because it's weird because when you, if you imagine when you go out to the pub, you know, you go out for a drink. Mm-hmm. If you don't know someone, they keep to themselves, don't they? You know, it's hard to gauge in that conversation sometimes. But with this, with the podcast that we do, you just build and build. And before you know it, you've got a group of friends that you've never met in person. But you've, yeah. it's an absolute blast to go and, you know, just say hello, have those chats with them. And, you know, just have a chill time. And I think that's what is also great about doing the podcast in is building those friendships with people and you know and it just carries on and it's it's just been great yeah yeah it's amazing and and for me like I, it doesn't take me long to like talk i talk to like random people it's like it's just how i am if i i, I pass somebody on the street i say hey how you doing you know i just talk to random people but it is amazing all the people you do meet it's mm. very amazing so yeah, i have and- to ask you when you went to your first investigation how were you feeling did you feel nervous <laughs> were you overwhelmed did you not know what to expect so my first my first investigation 
was actually a present from Sarah. She said that we, we were going out. It was our anniversary. Uh-huh. And um, it was our wedding anniversary. And I think the first place that I investigated with, and this was before I officially started doing it with, with a tea, we yeah. investigated a place called Wuthering, Wuthering Manor in Portsmouth. Um, okay. it's, a, it's an old manor house um, that dates back, there's a lot of there's a hundred years worth of history that they they've been able to piece together and there's a lot of different goings on in this manor house you know when you sort of step into it you know it's it's stepping into the unknown it's like oh you, you feel a bit unsettled like you're stepping mm-hmm. out of your comfort zone yeah yeah um, I, I learned I very quickly how screamish I really was at the start of it you know because you know it 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 does take a lot. I don't know if everyone would feel the same, but going into some of these locations and especially the history that you hear, mm-hmm. I think it, it, it sort of plays on your mind. Like you, you know what people have told you and what they've experienced. And you're like, well, I don't know how I would deal with, with this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the first one, I was very nervous and I did hang around in the background a lot. I wasn't like the, the, the forward person to say, yeah, I'll try this experiment. I'll try that. Um, it, it took a lot and I think when I joined Portal to the Paranormal um, a lot of the team got to know me before mm-hmm. and it was very easy to to wind me up so you know there was one there was one night we were at an investigation called Manor Farm and um, it was Nikki she was like oh I've left some stuff up in the one of the old cottages and I was like she was like can you go and get it for me and I was like okay now there's me walking up in the dark to this cottage, <laughs> you know, and I can feel like oh the old heartbeat's going. Anyway, so I'm dragging this box out, and I didn't realise they were all behind me. And she grabbed, she screamed, and oh my god, she she filmed it as well. I literally uh-huh. screamed like a scream that I didn't even know I was capable of doing. Um, but as as time's gone by, I think my bravery levels have gone up and, you know, yeah. I've learned, you know, a lot of stuff you need to, you know, doing it properly now, you know, it's, it's how you go in is, you know, how you introduce yourself when you go to a location, how, how you feel inside. So you, you've got to take into account your emotional and mental being as well. If you're not feeling great, maybe that going on a paranormal investigation isn't the best thing to do. You know, so, but yeah, I think over the years I've I've got better. You know, it's still yeah. easy to scare me if you ask a lot of the uh, of my <laughs> <laughs> of the guys on the team. You know, they're they're like another family to me. Uh-huh. You know, it's amazing how a common interest that we have, but we, you know, we do this because we have a real passion for it. But at the same time, we're we're like another family. We talk. We, you know, it's so good. So they know how to. They want to get me. They they know. And Dan, um, you know, he's put me in some oh, positions. Like we did an investigation at Oxford Castle in prison, and he thought it'd be a good idea for us to be locked in the punishment cells and sleep in there. Oh but man! It, you know, and I was like going into it. I was like, mate, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna talk. We're gonna do stuff, aren't we? Like, you know, do some experiments. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're setting up the beds everyone's locked the door from the outside so they only had the key so we were locked in couldn't get out you know five minutes later he was asleep and i was just there laying there in the corner <laughs> cell, looking at the ceiling uh honestly i could not see i was just looking up and i was like okay when is it daylight when is it daylight you know it was you know there is a situation that it does put you out of your comfort zone and i'm learning yeah, yeah. you know it, it's but again you know paranormal no i think it's just psychological because you know where you are you know the history of what what has happened in these sort of locations Mm -hmm. and for me it plays on my mind i'm like please don't anything happen when i'm on my own you know don't do it let's just stay calm but yeah but it's been a great experience as well yeah you know i've absolutely loved doing it yeah i think it's hard like to go kind of blindsided in an investigation if you hear like history from like other people or you could easily get it online so it's very hard just to go in and not know anything about it you know what I'm saying yeah um you know 
I think when you're taking things from other people, everyone experiences mm-hmm. things differently. Because I, I think it's sort of each individual will, you know, we're all different. So I think our experiences will be slightly different. I don't, I try and avoid taking on board what everyone's telling me. Because yeah. you don't know how, how much of it is true, how much they're trying to wind you up. and True. You know, so I try and think, you know, let's just take one step at a time and see what happens throughout the course of the night. You know, I think it's great to know the history of locations so you sort of understand the kind of people or the kind of spirits that you could be potentially communicating with. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but again, I think with every investigation, you, you can you can't guarantee that you're going to potentially communicate with spirits that are attached to those locations because we've had experiences where things have happened and these spirits have no link to the location. It's actually to a person that's with us that the link is between. So, mm-hmm. hey, Broken Capital, hope you're well. Um, so it's just got to be you've got to be prepared for anything to happen and I think yeah. the most important thing people need to realise with the paranormal is there's going to be a lot of times that nothing happens at all and that to me is a proper investigation when you can go back and say we went to this beautiful location lots of history but the activity wasn't 100% there wasn't a lot going on yeah, and I think that's I think that's just imp- as important to document to your followers or whoever's watching what you're doing mm-hmm. that you have that honest conversation because I do think sometimes people get into their head that you know unfortunately I think it's something to, we could be going into like the TV world here and that that they they portray that something happens all the time but you've got to be careful with the way they film. You know, mm-hmm. they got condensed it down to yeah, a specific exactly. amount of time. You know, you know, and then some investigations go on the course of a matter of days. You know, not just one day. It's a bit, you know. So sometimes when you're in locations, nothing can happen at all. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be prepared that you could be sat there for six hours. You know, and you, you're not going to get anything. You know, but that's where we try and when we know stuff is not really active. That's where we we come together and we we sort of have a laugh, we talk and you know and do you know what the amount of times things have happened when you look back on footage or your EVP mm-hmm. recorders and something's happened in the background, you know, and you think, wow, we didn't hear that to start with, you know, but it's, me, that's like saying there's something in the background that wants us to know that they're there and they're not happy that we're not taking any notice of them. But again, even when you think you've got something you got to be so aware of your surroundings and, you know, the type, because I'm not going to go, one foot movement, like mm-hmm. in a freaky building, can make a, and you think it's come from somewhere else. But, you know, so a lot goes into it as well. You know, that's the other thing, you know, a lot goes into it. But I it think does. people get the wrong, I think the people get the wrong sort of, you know, idea about paranormal investigations. They think you're going to go to exactly. a haunted location and it's going to be like this all night. Like It's like going into a candy store and, you know, you're going to get all the good sweets. It's not like that. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you get one thing, but it's the smallest thing that you pick up. You know, yeah. so I think that's why it's also important that you need to go back to certain locations to build a reputation with the location and, you know, and keep building and building, you know, because... I don't believe you can just walk in and then things are going to go, hey, we're all here, let's have a party and all that. It's, you know, it's, you've got to gradually build yourself with these locations as well. Yeah, exactly. It's not, you can't expect to go into every single investigation and immediately get something. It takes mm. time. It really does. Like when I was, um, I would say, God, it's probably like three years ago when I was in the SK Pierce house, Manson. Um, it took a long time before activity started happening. It probably took an hour or so before we actually started um, getting activity. So it sometimes it takes time. It's not immediately when you walk in, you're like, here I am. Okay, start, you know? Yeah. It can happen. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It, it's, and I do, I do believe, I've got my own belief system with how the paranormal may work. 
You know, I'm mm-hmm. not saying I'm right. But I believe, like, if you walk into a building and you don't know anyone, yeah. you, you don't give yourself out to them. You, you, you stay reserved because you're like, well, I don't know you. So I need to build the trust with you. And I think mm-hmm. that's the same with potential spirit. Now, the other occasion you do walk in and you, you know, something will happen straight away, you know, but I think it's, you've got to build trust. If you go in with the wrong attitude, yeah. you know, I, I think that's not a good way of doing it. And it's like Broken Capital said as well, you know, um, it's a great adventure. Um, yeah, it is. Things or not, it is a great adventure because you don't know what you're walking into. But yeah, you've got to be mindful of if you walk in and you're being confrontational, you know, mm-hmm. I think that that's not cool. You know, you don't need to have that hard exterior. Like I go in and I'm like, I introduce myself, you know, and I say, look, we're, I do. Here. We're, we're here just to find out your story, you know, what, what you may be doing here still, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, you're introducing yourself like you would with someone that you've just met for the first time. You want them to get to know you as much as you want to get to know them. Um, you know, you don't need to go in there balls blazing and like <laughs> think this is how it's going down. Yeah, you remember yeah. you're stepping into their territory. Exactly. You know, I mean, that, it's, a, it's respect. Definitely. Yeah. It's respect. It's like you, you know, me coming into your house, heaven forbid, if you're a spirit and me just barging in and saying, okay, show yourself, you know, it's like mm-hmm. you introduce yourself first just so you could get some common respect and then, you know, and then you may be able to tune in a lot better if they, you know, if you say your respect and say, hey, I'm here, you know, this is my name, this is my team member, and we're just here to visit you if you would like to talk to us. But yeah, I do agree. Definitely. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, the hardest thing, and I think everyone feels stupid when they first do this is when you're doing a call out, especially if you're on your own in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, the first time I ever tried it on my own, I felt I was like, I feel like a right tit. I'm calling out in the dark, mm-hmm. can't see anything, and I'm just hoping <laughs> for something to happen. You know, but it is it's amazing the amount of stuff that you actually get without even realizing. You know, so that's why it's important to have an EVP recorder out, having yep. a camera, having a camera out so you can look back on footage um and sort of analyze what has happened. And the other thing to do is when you pick something up is try and relate to someone that's been there before and see if they've ever picked up anything similar because then it sort of validates what you're getting. Do you know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. but, but no, it's, it is a great journey and, you know, it's, I think a lot of people, we, we, a lot of people need to realize we will never fully understand the paranormal. I think it's a field where, you know, we're, we're only touching the tip of the iceberg. But there's mm-hmm. so much more we need to uncover before, we, yeah. you know, you know. And the problem is, um, this is totally understandable. I think people tend to forget that these totally. spirits were people like, yeah, exactly. Do you know, I, mm-hmm. um, Broken Capital, he's got a great YouTube channel. Um, you know, if you haven't checked him out, go and check him out. Yeah, he's I'm going to check really him out, good, definitely. He, Thank you for a, your comments. You know, really, really good um, YouTube channel. But it's right need to remember they were spirit uh were real people at one point you know yeah. and you, you've got to build that trust mm-hmm. you know? and unfortunately um you know what what gets to me is people send out the wrong messages sometimes like these big you know youtube channels and you know they're they're very quick to to call out the word demonic you know mm-hmm. and for, for me you know, I think you, you're going down the dangerous path because if something moves aggressively, it doesn't mean it's demonic. You, again, we refer back to respect and we refer back to the fact that we're entering into their territory. You know, they may not be happy us going in there, doing the experiments that we do. Exactly. You know, so, so, you know, they're, they're going to be a bit unsettled or, you know, mm-hmm. especially if, if there's potential ch- children's spirits in there, you know, they don't know how to take what we're doing and they, they may not like it. Or the other thing people need to read, imagine that a person in real life was was horrible, was evil. I'm trying to watch the way I talk because I don't want to swear. Um, but, you know, if they were a bad person in life, 
more than likely they're going to pass on. If they've never changed, had the opportunity to change who they are, they're basically going to cross over and be the same in spirit world. If you so want. do you so. believe in that? Do you believe in that? If you're like a, if, if you're someone bad while you're living and you cross over, are you going to be that same person? Do you know, there's two ways of me answering this. There's the religious view of what I do have um, is that when we cross over, do we get a chance to, you know, redeem, be remorse, redeem, re be remorseful for what we've done and we get like a, a green card? That is possible. But then the other side of me thinks, you look at some of these, like on TV, you look at some of these crime documentaries, the, the sheer evilness in the people that commit murders and things like that and the way mm -hmm. they did it, you know, do do I think they're remorseful or feel, no. So would they cross over when their time here is done? Would they cross over that same energy, 100%? Mm. And if they were to stay and haunt somewhere, would they be that still aggressive an evil person. Yes, I do believe that's a possibility. And I think when someone comes across an energy that they feel is not nice, you know, then, you know, that could be because they weren't yeah. nice in real life. They were horrible people in real life. But the problem is, I think they use the word demonic because it's the scare factor. They're going to draw yeah. an audience in, you know, because they're like, well, but then people, you know, get the wrong idea of the paranormal field. That to me, there's a beautiful side to this field, you know, but people stay away from it because they think, oh, you're going into this and it's going to be demonic. It's going to be this. And yeah, you know, yeah. Actually, actually, do you know what? I've been lucky enough to investigate a fair few um, locations which has a dark history. And do you know what? I've never come on it across anything that I would demonic. say is demonic. Yeah. Now, I'm yeah. not saying I'm not saying it's not a real thing. It's six. Yeah. But me personally, I think you just got to be careful the way you're throwing it out, you know, and people are just throwing that willy nilly because I think they know they're going to get the views and things like that. But yeah, again, yeah, you, you're painting the paranormal field to be darker than what it actually is. It's actually nicer and you can get some really cool moments where, wow, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not as good as Nando. Nando is <laughs> So much more professional. I, I wouldn't go that far. You yeah. Know, um, if you see me on an investigation, I'm usually the one that's like, that's just happened. Let me go and check because I want to get Oh, that's there. great. And, that's great. And, you know, <laughs> I'll hide away. <laughs> and, you know, I always, um, you know, I, I just think it's not about someone's better than the other. Everyone yeah. brings everyone brings value exactly. to what they do. Exactly. You know? And, um uh, one thing that bothers me is people get that put themselves on like a hierarchy, if you get what I'm saying. Like, oh, I'm up here because I'm that much better than these people down here. I think if we all sit back and look at it, everyone has their own value. Everyone brings something different. Like me, I come across more, like, let's look at styles. And Sarah, um, on my team, Jojo, that they bring the fun. You know, they mm -hmm. have such a great personality, you know, and they can draw, you know, the fun side of things, like having people smiling, feeling at ease. Me, yeah. I'm more the I'm more the direct person, like I'm going in in not a professional because I don't see myself as professional. I that that word and me <laughs> I don't I don't me have that, there. I don't have that maturity. <laughs> I, I'm definitely not mature enough to say that I'm professional, but I'll tell you that now. Um, but I go into things and I like to get into the nitty gritty of things. Like if I'm talking to someone on my show, I want to understand what do you mean when you say this and not challenge people in a, in a, in a bad way. But I ask the questions that are, okay, well, tell me a bit more because I'll be honest, there's things that people do in the paranormal field that I don't necessarily believe in. Mm hmm but I'm not going to say they're wrong, but I'm going to ask them the questions to enlighten me a bit more and make me understand why it works and how certain things work. It's like, you know, one thing I'm always cautious of is mobile apps. You know, I've mm -hmm. tried them out. I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't because I have. And there's been key moments where responses have come out of like the Necrophonic, for example, mm -hmm. 
the response is dead on cue with a question that's just been asked. You know, and I'm like, okay, is that just coincidence? Is that because it's playing in a loop and it's just got back to the front where that correlates with the question that I've just asked? You know, so you're, you're working out. And the thing is, people will say, you know, dismiss the apps, but when you're looking at it in that form of how in sync it is with the question that you've just asked, Mm-hmm. It does question that, you know, is could this be something manipulating the app to get that answer out? You know, so I'm very like, I, I always question things. I always question things. And, you know, and that's why about what I do with my podcast, um, I'm more the guy that hides behind you and says, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> do you know what? I would love to go out with Broken Capital. And do an investigation and see who the out of the two of us who would be the one that would run away first. Like that would be but, the challenge of the night. You do know what the we, funny thing is? Is I always see a lot of Sarah. I don't see a lot of you. Because safety net. I'm there behind Sarah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do a little peekaboo and I'll be like, all right. Um, do you know? Do you know what? Honestly, and truly, I feel the front person you know i enjoy you know i enjoy taking it you know filming it, see what we can capture yeah um i think a lot of the times too many people are trying to do it as one big thing i think sometimes it could get overwhelming for for potential spirits that are in um that are in the locations you know so i try and sit back and i'll sit there with the camera and just film things that are going on um, but again, I I like the fact that the team are up front and they're doing their thing. Like I said, I think when you go into an investigation, if you can bring personality, laughter, it just relaxes the environment that you're in. It, mm-hmm. it just gives a nice build up for people to to enjoy what's going on as well because that's important. You know, I I love people to see. I love seeing people enjoying what we're doing, not going in. You know. It's great that you've got that scare element. You know, uh-huh. I think it's a good I think it's good to be a little bit vulnerable. But I I would hate to see people going in and they're petrified because they think really, really bad things are gonna happen. You know, um definitely me, ha, 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 I can picture me and you hugging each other like Shaggy and Scooby. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. I'll be, I'll, I'll be Scooby Doo. Oh Scooby-Doo. my god, I love Scooby Doo. I tell you. Scooby all day long. Um, oh my yeah. god! <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, it's you know, yeah. I I just think I don't need to be that forward person. I think it's great to have all the team, you know, because again, they all bring different elements yeah. to, you know. If you see me on the camera all the time, I'm quite like I, I wouldn't say generic, but I have a routine of the way that I would like to do things. Because that's how I like to document things or how I'd like to try and get my evidence and things like that. Yeah. But the, t- the guys in the team, you know, they they have such a great way of doing things. I know, like, some people say, oh, you need to sit in the room and just be quiet and, you know, ask your questions and then that's it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's actually really different. If you show that you're just as human as what these, what these spirits were, that's what they're going to think, oh, God. I like these people. Let, exactly. let, me, let me do something. Let me try and communicate with them. You know, and I think that's what's great. You know, having laughter, there's nothing wrong with laughing. You know, yeah. I know people might say, why are you laughing? Why, you know, at the end of the day, that's what life is about. Enjoying life, laughing, not sitting there all doom and gloom and trying to pick up like really horrible stories. Now, sometimes you will get those stories. You deal with it as it comes in. But in the meantime, just enjoy what you're doing. Have fun. Because if yeah, you don't have yeah. fun, you, you lose that passion. You lose that excitement for what you're doing. You know, so I, I just say enjoy what you're doing, you know, and just have a good time. And then if you get something, wow, share the evidence. Tell people what you think, you know, um, and let them have an opinion. One thing I would say is that you need to be able to, some people will come to you and say, I don't think that's anything. That's fair mm-hmm. enough. You know, because then again, 
you know, and I think that's where the unbalance is in the paranormal. Like, people don't like it when people have difference of opinions. It's either it's that and that's only, but no, if you're going to put things up, you need to be prepared. Like, this field is very questionable. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of different theories, a lot of different mem- methods are being used. And it's not going to match everyone's, like, it's not going to tick everyone's box, you know? So, yeah. But yeah. again, you can still have a great time and enjoy what we're doing. And that's exactly. what we're trying to do. That's exactly. What, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a skeptical person, I have to say. I truly. You know, after an investigation, we take time and go through the re- the videos, the EVPs, etc. Because, you know, and, and and I honestly, the ones that I really don't have to really look at is orbs. Um, and I have to say, like, I have sometimes a hard time understanding spirit boxes as well. Mm. Yeah, again, with orbs, everyone has very different views on it. Yeah. You know. Um, some people saying it's the reflection from a camera, it's a it's a piece of dust with the way it's moving, it could be mm-hmm. a fly, and that's very true. You know, when you're in the dark, things can look very different to what it actually is when you're in the light. But then sometimes there's specific, what I would say, more than like let's call it a light anomaly. The movement, the the you know, if you've picked up a light anomaly and it's going like it knows what direction it's going in it could be quite questionable, you know, what it is and the the movement. Like, if it's something sporadic, I would say, you know, that's someone that's just walked through the room and it's lifted all the dust up and it's all going everywhere. You know, it, but again, it's, everyone has an opinion which everyone is entitled to. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean what I'm doing is right or wrong. It doesn't mean if you have a difference of opinion to what I think, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's just we're different people and we see things slightly differently. And we need to respect. And I think that's what's great. Everyone that I've got to speak to and me, you know, we've had those on- honest conversations. You know, mm-hmm. I've said, you know, there's certain elements that I don't believe in. Mm-hmm. But that's not me saying, because I don't believe it, you can't do that experiment. Or exactly. that's, you know, it's just my belief system is slightly different. And and, you know, I think people need to appreciate that, you know, and be kinder with the way they react to someone else's opinion, you know, because at the end of the day, that's the beauty of it. We all have different things that we think works. And, you know, it's just how it is. It respect yeah. each other's ways and be happy, you know, yeah. don't get into all this drama about like i said earlier on they're up here you're down here i know i know it's we're we're all on a level we're all on a level yeah all the same people at the end of the day and we're all going into a journey that let's be honest we don't 100 percent fully understand what's going on you know because there's so many different things that can be happening you know and like i said there's people that have different abilities as well you know Mm -hmm. they're you know, their their third eye might be open more. They're more in tune. The frequencies that they're hearing to what we may be hearing mm-hmm. is different. But just because you can't do it doesn't mean that they're not doing it. You know, exactly. again, everyone has an ability. If they believe they have an ability, we have no right to judge it. Now, if they say something to you because they say that they they have abilities to connect with spirit through mind, hearing, seeing, smelling, but then they tell you something that you know is not right, then you question it and just say, look, that's got nothing to do with me. But again, it doesn't mean that they're lying about their abilities. You, you just got to be, I think people forget to be mindful. We're all human beings at the end of the day, and we're just trying to do what we feel that we're doing. Exactly. of things I get scared of probably aren't paranormal, but I just love the experience. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I'm very similar to you. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when I get scared of something, you know, I could be walking in the room and I'll see my own shadow and I'll shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will. I nearly said the bad word. I, I get scared, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's an element of, you know, wow, look at the, like some of these places that you go into, there's so many different rooms, there's different mm-hmm. levels, there's, you know, and there's different things that have, have been recorded in each room. Especially when you're going through it on your own, like you're walking through the building on your own, it is mm-hmm. testing. 
it does play on your mind. You know, you don't know if someone's walking behind you. You know, that's why I never look back. I will never look back. If I'm walking forward, I will carry on walking forward. And, you know, and if it gets too much, I just ring Sarah. It's like, Sarah, can you come and find me, please? So if you hear a noise in back of you, you're not going to turn around and look for the noise? <sighs> yeah. You're just going to um, keep on running? <laughs> if, if I'm on my own, I'm going forward. That's it. That, I only see Straight. the in front of me. Straight, easy. Nando's going straight. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think for me it depends on you know the location and you know again everyone has their sort of you know I don't believe anyone should be pushed out too much out of their comfort zone, yeah. you know because you don't want to break a person, you know that's the other thing. Um, but yeah, it, it really depends for me the location. Do I think it, you know if I know that windows like in old buildings you know the windows are very old and yeah. you know sound will get in very easily you can sort of debunk that very quickly and say okay that's something outside you know i'm cool with it you know it's um it's places where you go like under the tunnels and things like that. we've got a place called fort Woodley, and you're under the tunnel and it is that that is one of the places that i find a bit unsettling because there's different little corners that you can turn into um yeah that that's a weird place for me but yeah it sort of depends what's going on in the night yeah yeah <laughs> so, so when you go when your team goes into investigations what is um the type of equipment that you bring so we we try and use as much as we can to just you know because we're learning at the same time because they're developing mm -hmm. equipment all the time new stuff is coming out yeah. you know and you know everyone again Everyone has difference of opinions with equipment. Mm -hmm. For me, I like using an EVP recorder because yep. one thing, it, it, it will pick up low frequency noises that we don't hear by ear unless you've got the abilities to hear. But, it, you know, it can pick up, you know, sounds that we wouldn't generally hear. Um, I, filming everything. So I'm always got a camera, you know, I'm filming if it's on my phone or if it's on the camera, always yep. filming. You know, um, you know, because then you can get an angle of, you know, was there someone walking past at that moment? You know, you're looking for shadows where there's someone walking by, you know, just to see before you declare something as paranormal. Um, but we do try um, SLS cameras. We've tried them. Um, my opinion is you've got to be careful with the way you're using it. You, mm -hmm. The focus on it, because imagine if you put it down or you will and it gets the chair it's mm -hmm. going to map out the chair because of the legs of the chair and it's going to create that stick figure you know i think if you're going to use an um an sl sls camera it needs to be stationary so you put it somewhere where it's mm. facing a wall that has no pipe work so nothing can be detected you know so it needs to be on a very plain wall um and then if anything happens have it recording and best way to do it is have it where there's no one in the room. Yep. So if something does happen to appear, then it's harder to debunk it. It's harder to say that's not paranormal because you know the room's been empty. Um, we use REM pods. Um, you know, I, I, th I personally think a lot of the equipment you can use, you know, is it's not about saying the equipment don't work, is understanding the environment that you're in. You know, mm -hmm. if, you know, if you're setting the REM pod, you know, where it's going to set the the distance of it is too large, you know, it's going to pick up your movement. So yeah. you need to set in a way where it's enough for something to go forward to it, but not pick up when you're on the edge of the room. Um, but again, I think if you're outside in the elements, you know, a bit of wind will send off, set off your REM pod. For example, mm -hmm. if it's windy, if it's raining or stuff are dropping out of a tree, it can set off your equipment. So you just got to be very mindful where you're using it and how you're using it, I believe. But yeah, but I think EVP recorder, filming. Yeah, I do like doing that a lot and see what I can pick up. I do too. I'm a minimalist myself. When I go in, I just basically use myself as a tool. Um, I love dousing rods. I have to tell you, um, a couple of I, I had experiences with them and I absolutely enjoy using them to connect 
with spirits. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories going around that, you know, you're kind of like moving the, the dousing rods yourself. But I tell you, it's, you know, I honestly didn't move them when I, when I work with them. I actually keep them kind of loose in my hands and they just yeah. move themselves. So I yeah. like that. I mean, I like voice recorders. I do like cameras. Um, and I actually have, you've probably seen it, but I have like one of those um, kind of like um, uh, bird watchers. They have like the, the little, it looks like a satellite dish kind of to pick mm. up any sound waves or sound noises. So I do use that as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't use that much, I have to say. You know, I, I'm willing to try anything. Hey, Jonathan. Hope you're well, buddy. Um, I like Broken Capitals comment. I just send Carl in. And do you know what? That's a great idea. I should just wait. And if no one returns, then I know it's to go back to the hub and go for a cup of tea and <laughs> leave them to it. Um, you know, I'm willing to try anything. There was one, you know, we were trying an experiment with. Um, so basically, you've got like a writing board with. Um, so basically, a planchette was built but with a hole in it where you could put a pen and we set the pen in the middle of the board thinking if we leave it alone, something might manipulate it and try and move it. But mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, let's take this a step further. Let's film it. So we put um, a camera in front of the, the, the pen and the planchette. So if anything was to move it while we were gone, then we can, you know, that would be a great piece of evidence. When mm -hmm. we got back, and there was an actual line where oh, the pen wow. had moved. So I was like, yes, this could be the class A piece of evidence that I've always wanted to get. So I'm excited getting home, packing up my camera and everything. I was like, Sarah, I've got to get it on the, download it and start watching it. You know, I looked back at the camera and I could see all the files were there. So it's saved. And I was like, this is great. You know, so I'm going to sit there for hours and just analyze what's happened. Downloaded it all all the files were corrupted. They were there, oh, no. but it would not let me play. And I was like, so for me, I was questioning, is this something paranormal that's happening that stopped huh. my, you know, could this be something that they've done it, but they don't want me to see them doing it. So that's why oh, the wow. files were not, huh. you know, because all the files were saved. It was me and Sarah were there and we, we were telling the team, the files are all here. We've downloaded it. But then when we went to play it, it would not play one of the files. And I was just like, wow, it's there. It's recorded the date, the time of all the oh recordings God. and everything. Wow. But when we went to play it, it would not let us play it at all. And, I, and that was the first time I was like, okay, could this be that the spirit is clever and they know what they've done? They've let me know that something's happened by that line that's been drawn. Uh -huh. But they've been able to manipulate the, the recordings and stop that from recording. Oh, wow. Um, huh. The files were there. The files were there. Me and Sarah were just sat there and I was just like, that is, that is insane. You know, but again, uh, do you think you can manifest things the more you believe things? Yeah. Um, now, my, my thing is, I believe a lot of the if I would say the most I've experienced with, with, you know, is I believe my, my certain family members are around me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I never forget. Um, I think my, my boys, they were all, Gino and Rocco were still babies. Reese was, I think, coming into his teens. And there was one night I was um, sitting in the front room and, um, my grandfather come to my mind um, a little while before because I think, you know, he had passed and I think it was coming up to like an anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, but I was sat in the front room, the kids and everyone were in bed. And do you know the big heavy doors, like the fire, the fire doors, like they're quite heavy to open. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got to really push them. Well, I'd mm -hmm. close the door because I wouldn't want the kids to wake up. But anyway, this door handle like was pushed down. And the door opened. Now, two, I was like, okay, one of the kids are coming in. But I kid you not, a full apparition of my grandfather just walked into the room and sat right next to me. And it, it was like he knew that 
something was going on because he just sat there and, you know, but every time that I think of them when I've gone through a hard time, you know, that they've appeared to me in some way or form in a dream. Mm -hmm. And I think you can manifest it if you believe that they can come to you or, you know, I do think it is possible. Um, You know, but I believe you can manifest things when you've got a strong connection with them. You know, I had a very strong connection with my grandfather, my auntie, and I've witnessed things where they've come to me when I've needed it the most. Um, But then you could go into it and think, do you know, I really believe there's loads of spirits here and suddenly something will happen or something will appear to you. Um, I think it's your intentions as well, the way you go into something. Mm-hmm. If you go in it with the right reason and the right way of, you know, addressing yourself, then anything is possible. You know, that's the one thing about the paranormal. People like to say this is fake, that's fake. There. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you, know, you know you as a person. You know, I, uh, as uh, Broken Capital, I think sometimes you just know. You yeah. know when something's going to happen. You have that feeling. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, I think people try and dismiss things, not because they don't believe it, because they're scared of it. In life, I think a lot of people are scared of the unknown, so they try and hide away from it. And it's the same with the paranormal. If you don't know what you're going into and you're scared of it, the easiest way to to cover up that you're scared is by dismissing it and calling it fake or not real and all this Mm because i think people people are scared to to see what could happen it's like when we you know for me like a lot of people say when when you've passed away that's it you're done Mm -hmm. i I don't believe in that i i believe you know there's so many different options that that we will you know that we will be presented with you know um and I believe there is another, you know, we're going to another, you know, like world, shall we say, like a spirit world, whatever. But when we want, we can come back as and when. And that's what I've witnessed. Like, you know, um, I had a blood clot uh, nearly two years ago now. I was really ill. And Sarah said I was in and out. Now, I don't personally remember saying it. But mm-hmm. what's funny, so Sarah said that... Um, I turned around and said to her, it's okay. Nonno said everything would be okay. Now, I'm Italian. Nonno is grandfather in Italian. Mm -hmm. But what was funny, when I was out of it, all I knew was there was him and my Mm -hmm. auntie. Um, And even when I come out of an operation, the first thing I recall was my auntie sitting in a garden with loads of flowers. Mm -hmm. She loved her gardening. She loved her flowers. and. And again, I think, again, we're talking about can we manifest things? Yes, we can. When we need things more than ever, like if we're going through struggles, things can come to us because our vulnerability is very open. And I think that's why I have witnessed what, well, experienced what I have done. Now, people may turn around and say, you're cuckoo, you know, because, but I know, I know what I've, I've felt and, you know, no one has the right to say that you did not feel those things. I don't care if you, you know, you're looking at the the science of it all. You mm-hmm. know, you, you know, at the end of the day, if someone feels they've had an experience, they own that experience. No one has the right to tell them any different. You know, so exactly. that's that, that's my opinion. You know, people yeah, may not yeah, agree with yeah. me. I mean, I, I, I honestly agree with you. Like when, like, I believe I have abilities. I believe that I'm definitely an empath, um, clairsentist maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm still trying to figure things out, you know, like what, what, how can I bring uh, more of myself into the paranormal field? So for me, when I go into an investigation, I generally feel what the, the the spirit when he was alive went through whether or not it's a death or a heart attack or something like that um and you know and and then the other thing is you know there was one particular investigation i went to that um that there was an older gentleman that came um and he was really 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 sad because of his wife died for a sudden illness Mm. um, and he was just 
he passed away a couple of years later, but all I could feel is like the sense of like sadness and stuff. And sometimes it gets to the point that I could actually write down and draw people to. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but you just have to embrace it as well and just never second doubt yourself. Like if you keep on saying, I didn't see that. No, I didn't see that. You know, it's just putting more disbelief in you. I think the other problem is, is people put that self-doubt in you and, mm -hmm. you know, people's responses. And again, I think it's more because they don't understand what you're going through. It's mm -hmm. the same with anything in life. If someone struggles with mental health, like I'm a big believer about mental health. And I think, you know, it's such an important subject for people to touch on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but the problem is a lot of people have a wrong opinion of, someone suffering with mental health you know and instead of like trying to understand the person they try and move away from that person and avoid them now you know someone has psychic abilities it's the same thing they're not saying it because they're they're weirdos it's what they're feeling that is what they've experienced you know it's you know um but unfortunately we live in a world where people can't just be nice they've got to find a way of i believe we are both with instincts some people ignore them mm -hmm. and lose the ability but if it's you know, yeah i i agree with that you know yeah I think that's definitely a great, a great comment um you know again i'm willing to you know accept anyone like how they see themselves you know because i don't believe we have a right to to discourage people Mm -hmm. if it's if it's not for you that's cool you know you say you have abilities you know now i've i've always said and i've spoken to psychic mediums and you know you know and i've said to them you know okay but people may say that you're just look when you're given a psychic reading for example people may think you know what about if you're asking the question but you're looking for eye movement the body language how that mm -hmm. changes and that's how you're getting them to respond you know, there's so many, and it's not me saying I don't believe it, but I'm going to question it because I want to understand how how you're making it work. Do you know what I mean? It's, and you can always question something in a respectful manner. You know, I think that that's what's great. You know, if you can ask a question in the right way, mm -hmm. it's a great it's a great conversation. You don't have to go in like some of these people do. You're fake. You're this. You're that. The other, and then get personal what's that going to achieve except for drama well you know well it's... just like the paranormal field there's a lot of you know debunkers things like that there's a lot you know there's certain groups out there that you know false evidence things like that but the same with like psychics and stuff too that there's a lot of them that say they're psychic but they're truly not it's mm. just you know well you know and what i say like debunkers you know that there is there, there is a need for them to be able to prove that people are lying so people are not misguided, you know, mm -hmm. about the paranormal. But again, what gets thrown out is when things are turned personal, where you do these personal attacks, there's no need for it. You know, I'm not being funny. If someone can debunk a paranormal team, you know, then the debunkers need to be prepared when someone comes back at them and tries to debunk what they're saying. Yeah, But then it, it's that battle when you get personal and you're like, okay, this is not cool. You know, it, just keep it nice at the end of the day. If you're going to, you know, and I think that's what people need to do is just keep things nice and mm -hmm. there's no need for all this. You know, again, me and you, for example, we come from very different backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. You have abilities, I don't. But it doesn't give me the right to say, well, because I don't have abilities, I think you're lying. Mm -hmm. I think you're fake, you know. You know, there's no need. Oh, great. Tell me about your abilities. Tell me what you what you do and how. And I think that's the conversations we've had in the past when you've told me yeah. about it. You know, yeah. I, you know, I will ask questions and I was like, but how do you know it's this? How do you know it's not that? You know, it's just a way of doing things. And I think this is what's getting people too much wanting to be the top dog, you know, like like this, you know, and I, I'll, I'll just be the, the as Rope Capital, instead of Scooby-Doo, I'll be Scrappy-Doo. On the bottom, the little, the oh my god thing. scrappy was such a troublemaker <laughs> I'll, you're I'll, a troublemaker I'll be... you're not a troublemaker 
try to be, but then I'll get told off very quickly when Sarah's involved. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, do you know what I mean? I just try, you know, I'm happy just being bottom and just doing what I'm doing and enjoying it. You know, I've had, so much, I've had so much fun with, with people I've got to talk to and, you know, I just want that to grow. You know, I enjoy people when they come and when I'm doing my vodcast, you know, yeah. I, I, I love the fact that people come in and just have a laugh. You know, mm. I make a tit out of myself half the time. You know, I, you know, I'm not clever. I'm not, well, I'll say I'm a little bit clever, but I'm not, you know, like up here to anyone else. Everyone yeah, is on exactly. the level. Everyone's exactly. It's level. just, it's like the, bo- the the podcasts we both have, just be yourself and be real, you know? Mm. And, yes, and you could then- be nervous. Yes, you know, you always like right before, you know, you go live, you're like, ah, but just yeah. be yourself. Just be yourself. It's, it's like Broken Capitals just said again. Um, it's hard to explain just knowing something. Like, it's hard to explain when you're anxious. Like mm-hmm. I said, when you know, you just know. And that's the thing. You know, you don't necessarily, when you're anxious about something or when something's going on, like, you, you can't explain why. You know, it's just that feeling. We And I think that's the thing. We... Our bodies are more in tune to things and we're developing as we go along and things happen that we don't understand. And a lot of the times people choose to ignore it and not try and understand it. But I think it's great if you can try and understand what's going on, you can make some sort of sense and, you know, but yeah, I just think it's, it's all fun. It's, it's fun if you're doing it in the right way and you have the right, I think a lot of the paranormal, you need to be very positive as well. If you're if you're feeling rubbish and you're feeling a bit blur, you know, yeah. it, you know, just try and find a way to unwind. You know, just try and relax and and the thing is, you know, just enjoy it, have fun. I think that's the most important part, and I've said it a few times. Enjoy what we're doing and enjoy the people that you're meeting along the way. You know, again. I think it's great that if you can have a healthy debate about things, because that, mm-hmm. that meant for me, that's what I find interesting is when you can, you know, have a, an adult conversation with someone where you're saying, OK, you're telling me this. Let's talk about that. You know, I've spoken to people that have had experiences, um, encounters with UFOs and things like that, mm-hmm. you know, um, and there was a great uh, the Kinsella twins. I spoke to them on my podcast a little while ago never experienced anything with ufos or any kind of abductions and i had a lot of questions you know you know about it and we we were getting into like conversations and things like that about okay but i believe this and you believe that let's talk about it and it is such a great like when you have that healthy debate it's fun to do it but it's just those those moments where people take it a bit too far and they just start chomping away because they want to be right and try and prove you wrong well yeah and it's like you know the bigfoot and the you know the um mothman things like that it's just you know people believe in them people don't believe in them some people say that there's actually a portal that all these creatures and ufo beings come through and then they leave when they want to yeah again you know and i've been open i've spoken to people that do that they enjoy the is it cryptics that's what they called aren't they is it cryptics mm-hmm. um you know again not something that i heavily know like know a lot of but i've read story about the jersey devil and you know mm-hmm. i i've looked at and some of it for me is just like is this just someone's made a drawing yeah and they've made a story that's been picked up and it's been put on wikipedia and and things like that yeah. you know but again do i sit here and say because i might not believe in it that everyone that does believe it are wrong. No, you know, it's just my opinion differs to what you believe in or my, or your opinion. You know, there could be something uh, as a Mothman or, you mm, know, the Jersey Devil. Or, you yeah, know, yeah. For, you know, like the Loch Ness Monster. That was something mm-hmm. that's been heavily documented for yes. years and years and years. Yes. Sightings, everything, right? But then I think it was early, towards the end of last year or maybe earlier last year, people were saying they're able to debunk the Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. The thing is, you know, we don't know for sure. Like, 
it's not like people have witnessed and, you know, they filmed it. Yes, some of it's fake. But that's the thing, you know, we don't know for sure. Until yeah. a body is found of the Loch Ness or That's whatever. what they say, a body or like the you Bigfoot. Know. Why hasn't a body been discovered from a Bigfoot if there's is a Bigfoot? Yeah. You know, it's it's... Like I've, I've watched um, TV shows where they captured a Bigfoot or, you know, but then to me, when I've watched it, it just looked like it's a guy in one of those big puffy jackets that's walking <laughs> up into the mountains. Yeah, you know, because you look yeah. at the shape of it. But yeah. again, do I believe that? Does that make me right? No, it just means that that's my opinion. You know, some stories I think this is just out there, like this is just crazy. Yeah. But but again, you know, everyone has a different belief system, and we just go with what they say. Um, but I cannot, I cannot see you being in the woods by yourself in the dark looking for Bigfoot. Absolutely bloody not. <laughs> not a chance. No, no way. Nothing would ever, ever, Nando, go in the woods on your own and go and look for Bigfoot. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there's things I would do and there's things as a clear, absolutely. Yeah. You're having a laugh, I'll see you later on going home. You know, oh my um, god, that's too funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've been telling stories and sharing things since the dawn of time. It's built into us to talk about our experiences, and that's what I love about it. Looking at the world through other people's eyes. And that's the exactly. thing. Do you know what? Frank, he's great. Like he says it as it should be. You know, yeah. we, you know, it is everything he said there is correct, you know looking at things through other people's eyes, what they're seeing, mm -hmm. letting them share. I think if everyone's just a bit kinder and just listen a bit more, you know, mm -hmm. everyone has a story, you know, but everyone's story is different, but it doesn't mean, I think the problem is there is people out there that are out there to um, dupe people like make them believe in someone that's not real so it makes yeah. it harder for everyone else that is doing an honest investigation that is genuine who they are it makes it harder to build that trust and i think that's mm -hmm. the biggest problem you know is you know how can i trust you what makes you different to that person that is doing things the wrong way you know but sometimes you just got to put your faith in people and think listen to the way they talk listen to the way they present themselves you know for me like I said, I'm not clever enough to do all this dramatic and all this stuff. I just do what I do and I enjoy mm -hmm. it. And I enjoy it for me, you know, because it gives me, you know, you know, if I look back at my life, you know, I've done things that I'm not proud of. I've gone mm -hmm. through experiences that is not nice. Being part of Portal to the Paranormal has brought me back to life in a way. It's given me that sense of confidence again and you know on the sociability side you know i'm more sociable now i speak to people online a lot you know and i've met loads of great people along the way through the vodcast in person you mm -hmm. know it's been great um and i think that's what what i enjoy most about it, is the people there's a, there's a few little a few little people that get in that you think mm, okay maybe i shouldn't have said hello to you but hey yeah yeah move on. We move on. Let's leave that there and then just continue this journey. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. I think I think it's just the way the way we present ourselves to people and, and that's what's important is just being like you're never gonna please everyone. That's one thing mm -hmm. to say. Exactly. And not everyone's gonna like you. But at the end of the day, for me as a parent, I'm not gonna waste my time on that anymore. If you don't like me, a lot of the times people don't like you, but they don't actually know who you are. You know, they, they, you know, but you know what, let's just move on from it and keep smiling and have a good time. That's exactly. You know, that, that's it. That is Absolutely. It. You know, um, but, so, yeah. so what do you have lined up for the future? What is Portal the Paranormal? What are they going to be up well, to? Uh, so with the team, um, they are back out on the 4th of May. Um, mm -hmm. They are heading back out to, uh, Wuthering Manor in Portsmouth. Um, and then the 11th of May, we are actually staying in a, a farmhouse that is in the middle of nowhere. It's called Nunt Cross Farm. And you're um, going? I'm hoping to, depending <laughs> on how things are with me. You know, yeah. I, 
I've got to take things easy, you know, just make sure, you know, but I know the team will have a great time, but we went last year and the, the place is like, it's in the middle of nowhere. Wow. Um, the, the house itself has no running electricity. Um, it's, it's completely, yeah, out of nowhere and it's really out of your comfort zone. Like if you want, wow. if you want to go somewhere, that would be the place. If you're in the UK watching, Nuns Cross Farm is, and the story there is quite a story as well, you know. So, but yeah, that's us, and um, we've got a few shows coming up that I'm excited about. So, the end of the month, the twenty first, I'm actually going to be having all of Portal Par- of all of Portal to the Paranormal on, because I've never been able to have a, a vodcast with the whole team. The whole team on, that'll be exciting. Yeah, so. It's an opportunity for anyone that's watching. They can throw the questions at all the team. You know, yeah. I'm always the one answering the questions. That would be awesome. You know, so it's going to be nice to, you know, and it'd be great for everyone to see the real portal to the paranormal because mm-hmm. they're a great bunch, you know. But again, you know, doing the podcast and everything, it's quite daunting because you don't know who what to expect, do you? You know, when I first started doing it, I yeah. didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I was just like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And I'll be honest, yeah, to yeah. this day, I haven't got a bloody clue what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. I'm just I know, I know. When I first started, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, how do I even get on live? <laughs> you know, um, I think uh, one of my craziest moments, oh, I had Dave Schrader on um, from the Hosta Files. And I was so nervous. I don't know why. But I started calling him Bob in the green room. Who, the, who was Bob? And, do you know what? And that's me, you know. I just like to have a good time. And then if I mess up, I just own it and just be like, okay, I made a boo-boo, but let's move on and just keep smiling. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got that um, that podcast coming up. Um, and really, we're just enjoying, you know, interacting with everyone through Facebook, you know, um, you know, and just having a good time with everyone. And I think that's what's yeah. making it. Yeah. You need to come time. to the U.S., Hey, if I come over there, you lot wouldn't get rid of me. Well, you most probably shoot me out after five. <laughs> you definitely minutes. need, I, and I need to go over there. I honestly do. Um, you know, we hopefully we've soon. Hit, I, th- I think, like the UK, we have a lot of history here, like yeah. the, with the castles. You know, we have a lot, a lot of history. But the US, you know, you guys over there, the asylums that you've got. Mm-hmm. You know, oh God, I, I see some of the stuff that you guys do over there, and I'm like. I would love to be, but it's the same with you guys. You would love to be over here to, you know, because of the castles and everything. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I say, I say, let's go and do an asylum. And then I think about it. Nando, would you really go through and walk through? And a, mm, oh, mm. my God. You know, what's so funny is um, I play uh, phasophobia with my son. And, you know, in real life, I'm just like, I'm all in there. Like, I'm all in there. I'm opening myself up. But I'm, like, creeping around the corner in the game. Like, <laughs> you know, I played that I played that one evening, right? So everyone's in bed, right? I thought everyone's in sleep. I've got the, the light on. So I'm there playing it well into the game. And I'm like, okay. I didn't realize Rocco had come down and he was just stood there. He didn't let me know he was there. So I'm there playing, and I look in the corner of my eye, completely, as you can imagine. And I was like, <laughs> what you? oh, I was just waiting for you to finish. I was like, right, I'm finished now. Switch off the game. Let's go to bed now. You know, he, and I haven't played it since. If I'm honest, <laughs> I haven't played it since. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's how easy it is to scare me. But, but no, it's, um, it's a great game. It's a good yeah. game. You know, um, I think, who have I watched playing it? I, Matt used to play it, Matt Barron. Um, he mm-hmm. used to play it quite a bit, and I used to watch him when he used to do the the game inside of things. Yeah, um, that's amazing. Yeah, again, those yeah. games sort of make your mind go crazy, and just like and you know, jump scares, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Why, why, why am I playing a virtual game when I go to these locations in real life? And I know, you know I don't, I don't I need to do this to myself, you know. But no, it's all, it's all good fun. And like I said, the most important part for me. It's just enjoying the time that we have and, you know, enjoy, you know, it's a great way to network with different people. And, you know, it's like broken capital, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, I love the way he's, he's put in his comments and everything and it relates, you know, is, you know, and again, 
you know, one thing that is important, like he says, I'm more, prof- I'm not professional. You know, I'm just me and everyone has a value. No matter what we go through in life, everyone is valued and no one has the right to make anyone feel anything less. You know, we all have a position on this planet, whatever we do. But I, the most important for each and every one of us is just to be kind to one another and accept people for who they are. And exactly. If and if you can't do that, then mm-hmm. kindly walk out the door, enjoy your life and let us enjoy our life. As simple as that. And be done with it. But anyway, that's me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. Well, almost over an hour. Um, Already? Already? I know. I know. We could go on for hours and hours, Jeez. but... They'll, they'll shut us off at a certain point. So, um, so she's getting bored of me, people. She's getting bored yeah, of me. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, we'll chat after we're done. Um, so you know, everybody check out Nando Porto the Paranormal, check out Facebook, check out the YouTube channel, um, but Instagram, everything that you have, check you yeah, out. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah, we're pretty much Facebook everywhere. Is the place that, yeah, I think yeah. Facebook is the the best place where we put a lot of our stuff but yeah you know if if anyone wants to interact with us you know please join us on our podcast and it's an open conversation we just have a laugh and you know come and join us and you know what we'll have to do is get this lovely lady on on our podcast and yeah well it's not going to be the last time everybody sees you so on mine so (laughs) but um back soon (laughs) yeah yeah but but uh everybody you know Come and see me if you would like on uh, Paranormal Happy Hour on Facebook. Um, the YouTube channel is a combination of Central Mass Paranormal Society, which is my group. Um, I'm a boss, true Bostonian. Um, so that's I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, Central Mass Paranormal Society and Paranormal Happy Hour could be seen as one channel on YouTube. And I would say... Um, it, it was great. Great well, time. It, it, it's always good. You know you're having fun when time's flying by and you don't realise how much time has gone. You know. Exactly. You know, but me, I can waffle on. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut and say thank you for everyone that's joined. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a great chat. And thank yeah. you for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. And everybody stay tuned. In a couple of weeks, I'll have another guest. Um, the Ghoul Gang is actually going to be joining us. So... Um, Stay tuned, everybody, and have a great night. Bye, everyone.